Alright. Here is shoddy DPS build you sick loving bastards. Same as before, same testing place, same difficulty which is veteran, but this time a predefined character. With predefined characters we cannot change attributes. Attributes are distributed automatically whenever they level up. So I guess one less thing to think about. The problem with that is that uh, you are restricted until you reach higher levels. And then again if you create another priest with similar focus, he will do much better than Shoti, simply because you can specialize in something else. Still, Shoti is very very good, because she's got specific ability tree that no other priest have. She's also got amazing unique weapons at her disposal, and when you combine some of this stuff you'll see what can be done. There are plenty of abilities you can use. I suggest until you reach level 13 and power level 7, use Shoti as support and healing class. Major damage spells come from power level 7 to power level 9, with power level 7 being the most important one. Damaging spells that are worth mentioning up until that point are Blessed Harvest. This is unique ability tree, by the way. This is only for Shoti. Other priests cannot have this ability tree. That goes for Blessed Harvest. Blessed Harvest is one of the best abilities one-on-one. -on -one. It does stupid amount of damage, which I'm going to demonstrate later. The only other damaging ability that is worth mentioning is Pillar of Holy Fire that is at power level 6. Other damaging abilities are not that great, that's why I suggest that you stick to healing and supporting up until level 7. Spells that I recommend that you use are Interdiction. It creates a circle on the ground that dazes opponents. Daze is a very good effect. You can see what it does. Consecrated ground, I mean it's a healing circle on the floor, no more explanation needed. Devotions for the faithful, absolutely amazing skill. Same goes for Triumph of the Crusaders. Definitely choose Barring Dead's Door. You will see its effectiveness in the demonstration part of the video. And really the rest is up to you what you want to pick from these options. Later on you can respec in the tavern and choose these abilities however you want it. At power level this is where the fun starts. Storm of Holy Fire, an amazing bloody skill. And Minor Avatar. Look at all the boosts, you get plus 5 to every single attribute. For 30 seconds, plus 40 max health, plus 20% damage with weapons. Ridiculous! You become an off-tank. And you can deal decent amount of damage as well. Especially if you combine Minor Avatar with Blessed Harvest. That is just stupid. You have two power sources for this power level. So it means you'll be using them on Storm of Holy Fire and Minor Avatar, nothing more. At power level 8, I'd say that Symbol of Aeotas is the best DPS option out of all of these, out of all the others, though I like to use this one as well, Spark the Souls of the Righteous. It depends on the situation really, if you want to do fire damage or if you want to do shock damage. This buff is also nice, if you want to buff instead of using more DPS spells. For level 9, definitely go for, for Magran's Might, this thing destroys families, I mean it's absolutely ridiculous how good this skill is. That's why you only have one power source, forget about everything else, go for Magran's Might. And obviously Prestige as a passive ability, but I don't even have to tell you about Prestige, as soon as you see Prestige at level 19 and 20, take it. That's really all there is to it. As for the passes, the things that are a must here are sword and shield style, because this is what we're using with Shoti. She's got amazing unique weapons. Combat focus. Sign of flame. Improved critical. 
rapid casting and obviously prestige. Out of the other ones it's up to you how you want to put points. I focused mainly on defensive skills to buff Shorty so that she can off tank as well. You gotta understand that Blessed Harvest is a melee attack. So you'll be receiving some damage and that's why I went with some defensive abilities to help me survive. One more important thing, Shoti needs to have religion maxed out. Why religion? Well, this is why. Shoti's sickle can be enchanted to Soul Reaper. This is what I suggest if you go with DPS. Now look what Soul Reaper does. Plus 5% sickle damage until combat end on scoring kills. Takes 4 times. Increases with religion skill. This is one reason why you should max out religion. Second one is Light of the Dawn Star effect. 30% resistance against spells. The chance increases with the wielder's religion skill. Now that's huge. That's fucking huge. As for the gear, I went with something like this, light armor, really recovery time here is important, this one is specific because it's got minus 15% recovery time, I don't know where I got it, can't remember, but anyway, just stick with something that has low recovery time. Also try to buff might with other items, don't forget to also enchant shoty sickle. This thing can be devastating, even though it's only a one-handed weapon. Now for the demonstration part. Start by summoning power level 7 spell Storm of Holy Fire. And then use Withdraw on yourself. All done. Enemies will die. You will be out of the fight. I mean, it's a perfect combination. You can go into any fight like this, with the rest of your team hanging out somewhere in the back doing fuck all, while you deal with the bastards. Now I'm gonna transform into minor avatar and get all those nasty boosts. Here I can tank much more and I can also do more damage. Auto attacks are not that great, unless you use Blessed Harvest, as you've seen now, 174 damage on the giant. As I said earlier, shoty DPS style of play is not recommended until you reach power level 7. But in this case I'm gonna defeat all of these bastards on the docks without using power level 7 to power level 9 abilities. Just so that you can see what can be done. I started with that crappy spell called Wild Thorns, so the only real DPS spells are Blessed Harvest and at power level 6 Holy Pillar of Fire. That's it. Goal is here to survive. This is where barring Death's Door will come in play tremendously, next to all the other nasty skills that priests have. Problem when fighting so many enemies is that they're constantly interrupting you. Now with barring death's door you can actually have with this setup at hard levels about 30 to 40 seconds of immortality. Simply because you can use barring death's door twice in a row. As long as you don't spend any more power sources for that power level. That's really all, all there is to it. Whenever I'm in trouble, I withdraw or use Barring Death's Door. The rest of the time I use Blessed Harvest. And in this case, considering that I'm not using the highest level spells, I've used Holy Pillar of Fire. And that's really about it. That's how I defeated all of these bastards on the docks. 
priests have a fantastic array of skills that can be implemented and combined in so many ways but most of the skills are not that great so you need to know which ones to pick considering that power sources are limited every power level that's all there is to it so i've cleared this same place on veteran with the usage of highest power level skills and without using highest power level skills Shot is a fantastic character to play, too bad we cannot reassign attribute points, that would make her absolutely amazing, second to none probably. But it is how it is, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the build, and see you all soon.